Jack McGee Written by Jerry Spinelli We know the character's real name is Jeffrey But now he's Maniac McGee Maniac McGee Good morning, sixth graders. How we doing? Holy snow, Batman, huh? It's been insane. Because of that, I'm sure many of us have kind of forgotten where we were. Just to briefly catch you up, we had Maniac, who was chased by the Cobras into the East End. And that's where he met Mars Bar. Do we remember this? The bully, Mars Bar, approached him, offered him a bite of his candy. Maniac, being innocent, naive, took the bite. This enraged Mars Bar. Eventually, a woman stepped in, bailed Maniac out, but not before Mars Bar ripped a page from the book. And don't forget, Maniac borrowed that book from Amanda, who he seemed quite taken with. So if we open our books to page 38, we should already be there, because I believe this slide should show. Open your books to page 38. We're going to read two chapters right now, real quick. And then we got five questions to answer. And they're off half day. You guys are spoiled. Half day. All right. Chapter 11. Page 38. Maniac is in the East End with a ripped book. Here we go. Now what? Maniac uncrumpled the page, flattened it out as best he could. How could he return the book to Amanda in this condition? He couldn't, but he had to. It was hers. Judging from that morning, she was pretty finicky about her books. What would make her madder? To not get the book back at all, or to get it back with a page ripped out? Maniac cringed at both prospects. He wandered down the East End, jogging slowly. In no hurry now to find 728 Sycamore Street, he was passing a vacant lot when he heard an all-too-familiar voice. Hey, fish belly! He stopped, turned. This time, Mars Bar wasn't alone. A handful of other kids trailed him down the sidewalk. Maniac waited. Coming up to him, Mars Bar said, Where are you running, boy? Nowhere. You're running from us. You're afraid. No, I just like to run. You want to run? Mars Bar grinned. Go ahead. We'll give you a head start. Maniac grinned back. No, thanks. Mars Bar held out his hand. Give me my book. Maniac shook his head. Mars Bar glared. Give me it. Mars Bar shook his head. Maniac shook his head. Mars Bar reached for it. Maniac pulled it away. They moved in on him now. They backed him up. Some high schoolers were playing basketball up the street, but they weren't noticing. And there wasn't a broom swinging lady in sight. Maniac felt a hard flatness against his back. Suddenly, his world was very small and very simple. A brick wall behind him, a row of scowling faces in front of him. He clutched the book with both hands. The faces were closing in. A voice called. That you, Jeffrey? The faces parted. As the curb, uh, at the curb was a girl on a bike. Amanda! She hoisted the bike to the sidewalk and walked it over. She looked at the book, at the torn page. Who ripped my book? Mars Bar pointed at Maniac. He did. Amanda knew better. You ripped my book. Mars Bars' eyes were big as headlights. I did not. You did. You lie. I didn't. You did. She let the ball. She let the bike fall to Maniac. She grabbed the book and started kicking Mars Bars in the beloved sneakers. I got a little brother and a sister that cran all over my books, and I got a dog that eats and poops on them. And that's just inside my own family. And I am not going to have nobody else messing with my books. You understand? By then, 
Mars Bar was hauling up on the street past the basketball players, who were rolling on the asphalt with laughter. Amanda took the torn page from Maniac. To her, it was the broken wing of a bird, a pet out in the rain. She turned misty, misty eyes to Maniac. It's one of my favorite pages. Maniac smiled. We can fix it. The way he said it, she believed. Want to come to my house, she said. Sure, he said. Page 41, Chapter 12 When they walked in, Amanda's mother was busy, busy with her usual tools, a yellow plastic bucket and a sponge. She was scrubbing purple crayon off the TV screen. Mom, said Amanda, this is Jeffrey. She whispered, what's, what's your last name? He whispered, McGee. She said, McGee. Mrs. Beale held up a hand, said, hold it, and went on scrubbing. When she finally finished, she straightened up, turned, and said, Now what? Mom, this is Jeffrey McGee. You know. Amanda, Amanda was hardly finished when Maniac zipped across the room and stuck out his hand. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Mrs. Beale. Mrs. Beale. They shook hands. Mrs. Beale smiled. So you're the book boy, she started nodding. Amanda came home one day. Mom, Mom, there's a book I loaned one of my there's a boy I loaned one of my books to. Loaned a book? You? Mom, he practically made me. He really likes books. I met him on Mom Amanda screeched. I never said all that, Mrs. Beale nodded solemnly. No, of course you didn't, and gave Maniac a huge wink, which made Amanda screech louder until something crashed in the kitchen. Mrs. Beale ran. Amanda and Maniac ran. The scene in the kitchen stopped them cold. One little girl, eyes wide, standing on a countertop. One little boy, eyes wide, standing just below her on a chair. One shattered glass jar and some stringy, pale-colored glop on the floor. One growing cloud of sauerkraut fumes. The girl was Hester, age four. The boy was Lester, age three. In less than five minutes, while Mrs. Beale and Amanda cleaned up the floor, Hester and Lester and their dog Bow Wow were in the backyard, wrestling and tickling and jumping and just generally going wild with their new buddy and victim, Maniac McGee. Maniac was still there when Mr. Beale came home from his Saturday shift at the tire factory. He was there for dinner when Hester and Lester pushed their chairs alongside his. He was there to help Amanda mend her torn book. He was there watching TV afterward, with Hester riding one knee, Lester the other. He was there when Hester and Lester came screaming down the stairs with a book, Amanda screaming even louder after him, the kids shoving the book and themselves onto Maniac's lap, Amanda finally calming down because they didn't want to cram the book, they only wanted Maniac to read. And so he read, Lyle Lyle Crocodile, to Hester and Lester, and even though they pretended not to listen to Amanda, and even though they pretended not to listen to Amanda, Mr. and Mrs. Beale. And he was there when Hester and Lester were herded upstairs to bed. And Mrs. Beale said, Don't you think it's about time you start heading home, Jeffrey? Your parents will be wondering. So Maniac, wanting to say something but not knowing how, got into the car for Mr. Beale to drive him home. And then he made his mistake. He waited for only two or three blocks to go by before saying to Mr. Beale, Oh, this is it. Mr. Beale stopped, but he didn't let Maniac out of the car. He looked at him funny. Mr. Beale knew what his pa passenger apparently didn't. East End was East End, and West End was West End. And the house this white lad was pointing to was filled with black people, just like every other house on up to Hector Street. Mr. Beale pointed this out to Maniac. Maniac's lips started to quiver, and right there, with the car idling in the middle of the street, Maniac told him they didn't really have a home, unless you counted the deer shed at the zoo. Mr. Beale made a U-turn right there and headed back. Only Mrs. Beale was still downstairs when they walked into the house. 
She listened to no more than ten seconds worth of Mr. Beale's explanation before saying to Maniac, You are staying here. Not long after, Maniac was lying in Amanda's bed, Amanda having been carried over to Hester and Lester's room, before where she often slept anyway. Before Maniac could go to sleep, however, there was something he had to do. He flipped off the covers and went downstairs. Before the puzzled faces of Mr. and Mrs. Beale, he opened the front door and looked at the three cast iron digits nailed to the door frame. Seven, two, eight. He kept staring at them, smiling. Then he closed the door, said a cheerful, Good night, and went back to bed. Maniac McGee finally had an address. <laughs> Maniac McGee, written by Jerry Spinelli. We know the character's real name is Jeffrey, but now he's Maniac McGee. 